My friends, if only everyone in this country could have heard that speech. But what I want is everyone in this country and beyond to be in no doubt whatsoever as to what is happening in the ancient Assyrian lands. And I want no one to be any doubt whatsoever as to why we in this country have an absolute abandoned duty to assist and help in every way. Look around here and I see Father Tony, I see Mr. Darnell, I see Mr. Michael, I see Mr. Michael, I see Mr. Michael. <laughs> I, I see my good friend Isaac Asia there, I see many of Koshabas and good heavens, Wilson Jaso. <laughs> I feel this is a family. But when a family feels pain, everyone feels that pain. And believe you me, the agony, the slaughter, the genocide that is being inflicted on the Assyrian people at the moment is something which is not just felt as a pain by every one of us in this country, but is also a spur to action and to duty. We cannot, we must not, we will not stand by while we watch a people who fought shoulder to shoulder with the British over so many years. Who paid, who paid the blood price of loyalty. When I think of the contribution that the Assyrian levies have made and the number of families who have been involved personally, I know the debt that is owed by this country, not just from those days, but also since you chose, and we are honoured that you chose to live with us. And my friend Isaac Azer, my next door neighbour there at the moment, is typical of those members of this community. Peaceful, hard-working, law-abiding. <laughs> behind members of parliament and putting flags around their shoulders. But then I know that this is a community which must be defended and must be supported. Now, I hope that somewhere in the audience is my very good friend, Emmanuel Yacoub. Emmanuel, where is he? Emmanuel and I have stood on the plains of Nineveh. We have been there. We have seen there with Yonadan Hanna and we have actually met the community on those planes on the left. Is he here? Yes, yes. He's so small, Where are you? Where are you? May I say, Emmanuel Jacob may not be the tallest of men, but he is one of the greatest of men. <laughs> but what I learned when I visited that country, when I visited your homelands, was that my Christian faith as a Christian in this country is inextricably linked with your nation with your contribution, with your presence at the birthplace of Christianity. That's, that does not mean, that does not mean that the Yazidi and the Turkmen and the other people are not in our hearts. They are. But I have to say there is a special place for the Chaldean and the Christian community because you are being picked on, you're being targeted and victimized for that faith. And how proud I was to hear you say that there is one thing no Assyrian will ever do, and that is bend the knee to the oppressor and swear to change their faith and religion. <laughs> the courage, the courage, the courage you show in making that statement makes me humbled. There are, in history, many occasions when Christians have been faced with a choice of conversion or death. On some cases, they have not chosen to pursue their faith to the ultimate. Your people have. But, what we must do now is more than words. There are more things that must be done. It is not good enough for people like me and Charles Tannock and Barris Nicholson and all the other people who have been here today to say how much we respect, admire and love the Assyrian people. What you need now is more than words. You need concrete and specific actions. And I'm proposing a couple of things now. The Foreign Office Minister, who's just come back from Iraq, has just written to me. Uh, Wilson has got a copy of the letters there, if anybody wants one. And there is a list of actions that the British government are taking. All very well, up to a point. Up to a point, my friends. All very well to offer humanitarian assistance, quite right. All very well to provide medical help and food and support in the camps, absolutely right. But there are other things. There has to be that safe haven 
There has to be a space. There has to be somewhere. Is it so impossible in the 21st century that people true to the teachings and example of our Lord Jesus Christ are not allowed the freedom to practice that religion? They must have that space. You have And when people say there are so many problems in the world, why should we concentrate on this one? I say, as long as one system like this is, it exists, we have a duty on any occasion, and it's not just because of the fact that we are so close. It is the fact that in global terms, this is a crime, beyond a crime against the people, beyond a crime against a nation, this is a crime against the whole of humanity. And humanity, humanity has a duty to respond to that. There are other things that we can do. In my own constituency, and I know quite a few of my colleagues have been in the same situation, we have been faced with families who have fled from northern Iraq, from the ancient Assyrian lands. They must be given asylum, support, assistance, help in this country. I know, I know this is a community which looks after its own. I know that you put the hand of friendship around the people who arrive very often with nothing but the clothes they stand up in. I know that. I respect that. And I admire you for that. But I, as a British parliamentarian, and I, as a representative of this parliament, must do more. We must say that the Assyrian people have earned the right to our support, our friendship, and safety in this country. Whether, whether there will be a time when the great Assyrian people can return to their homeland is not for me to say here and now. I don't know. I pray that it will be. But at the moment, we must advise and assist and offer support and succor to those who are here. I will say one thing as an outsider. I'm not a member of the family. I have no Assyrian blood. Sometimes my heart beats to the sound of Julia and the Jandu, but I... <laughs> but then, who started? <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it's okay, she used to be a singer before. <laughs> Look, there is one thing I would say. In the history of your nation, which goes back four, five, six thousand years, how many thousand years, I don't know. In the history of this nation, the people who invented the postal service, the dry cell battery, the main roads, and if I may say, lager, and the clock, there have been many occasions when the enemy, the oppressor, has attacked. However, one thing has never changed. Even when there has not been an Assyrian nation, even when Ashurbanipal has been defeated in battle, even when the Assyrians have been put to flight, that quintessential Assyrian pride and culture has never, ever weakened. Even if there were one Assyrian person 